you here alone? Why, Gloria? Why are you carrying all this burden? Why are you carrying all this burden of agony, of so much pain, of hatred? It's eating you up. It's digging you deep into the bottomless, bottomless ocean. Gloria, I want to get out. I don't know how to get out, Father. I don't know. I've lost my way. I'm too ashamed. I know I've messed up, but I know you don't want me. You don't want me, Father. Yeah. <laughs> Just talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Come to me, Gloria. Come to me. Come to me if you ever need me. I will give you so much rest. <laughs> Just come to me. Heave my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. Heal the land. I am ready, Lord. I need help. I am ready. I am ready. Just trust me. I am ready. Just trust in me, Gloria. Just trust in me. And come to me. Come to me, Gloria. I restore your family. I restore you. Restore the lost glory. Why would you want to restore a mess like me? Of what good am I to you, Father? <laughs> you will be useful in my vineyard. You will be useful in my vineyard, Gloria. I'm going to restore the lost glory to your family. Amen. I'm ready, Lord. Just come to me, Gloria. Gloria! Gloria! Uh, Mama Gloria, what is it now? Ah! Uh. Wake up! Pastor Flora is here. Please hurry up and come and attend to her. Oh, okay, uh, tell Pastor Flora I'm coming. Ah! Uh. God bless you. What kind of dream is this now? Eh? You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I know there's a reason you brought me here today. I know you brought me here today for a reason. Lord, speak to me. Let me say the right word. All right, Lord, let me say the right word in Jesus' name. You are the I am that I am. You are the King of Kings. And that is what I say. Baba oh, Eshe. That is what I say. Baba ho, Eshe. You are the mighty God. Speak to me today. Speak to me today. Speak to me today, God. And I'm going to speak to Sister Gloria. God, speak to me. Let me say the right word. Let me say things of the Spirit. Let me say things that are refreshing to the Spirit. Let me speak, God, let me say things that are of you, Lord. Don't let me speak of my flesh. Don't let me speak of my excitement. Don't let me speak of my interest. But let me speak of your will. Let the right word, let it come through my mouth in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let the right words come to my mouth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done in our life. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, 
for everything you have the lord i thank you lord i thank you lord because i can feel it in the name of jesus i can feel the victory already in the name of jesus i can feel this lost soul you have brought back to your vineyard lord lord i thank you lord in jesus name lord i thank you in the name of jesus thank you lord you were rich in love in the name of jesus oh lord i thank you lord in the name of jesus thank you lord for your love thank you thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord for everything you have done oh sister gloria how are you doing how are you doing today well i've been waiting for you i'm glad you are here how are you pastor mrs flora alpha pastor Pastor, okay. Stop okay. knocking. Okay. 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 Hey. Hey. If, ah. if that's what we let you listen to me today, how are you doing, Pastor? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, Pastor. Sister Gloria. Yes, Sister Pas Gloria. Pastor, Pastor, Mrs. I'm, how are you? How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's good to see you. It's good to see Sister Gloria. Thank you, Pastor Mrs. Yeah, how is everything? Work and everything. <sighs> well, well, I'm getting there. Sister Gloria, I actually came here to see you today. I came here to see you today um, to speak to you about something important. Hmm? Because I respect you, Pastor Mrs. Ah. These are somebody else. They know they cannot come here. Sister Gloria. Ah. Okay. And you are one of the people that laugh at my jokes. Uh, and you are very funny. That's why I think that you you are going to do great things. Ever since I left that church, ever I don't even know why my, my mother and sisters are still going there. Ah! I, I don't know what they are looking for. It's okay. Anyway, after even after I left, it's only you. I don't know, you just be pursuing me. Sometimes he said, you be tormenting me. You know, in my dream, I'll be seeing your face, seeing your face. You know? I know it. I said, why is Pastor Mrs. Are always following me? Eh? Yeah, I love you. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. It is God. See, God, I, I think there's something that God wants to do in your life. I, I, you know, recently, like, I've been praying to God upon you. And God has, God showed me a revelation upon you. You know, I remember when we were younger, how you used to come to church, how you do things, you read the Bible to kids. Story for the birth. I you, Sister Gloria. Story for the birth. recently I had a revelation from God. God told me that true you is going to do great things in your life. True you. Can God use a wretch like me? Ah. Don't talk we are we are gone deep, oh. <laughs> ah, we are we are See, gone deep. See, let me let me let me let me show you something in the word of God. Let me just hold on. It's something you know. You think that God cannot use you, but one thing about the Bible is that everything is in the Bible. What you think doesn't exist. What you think is new on this earth is on the Bible. Listen. Psalm 41, uh, 41 20, verse 4. Let me just read that to you, um, Sister Gloria. It says, I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. It's in the Bible. Where was God when they were doing what they did to my family? Ah! Sister, where was God? Sister Gloria. Ah! Ah! He, he left us. Where was God? Oh, you know, Sister Gloria, just what you said the other time that can God use someone like me? We have all these instances in the Bible. There was a prostitute, and Jesus spoke to her. Nobody wanted to speak to her, and some people came and condemned her. And Jesus said, e "If you don't have sin, be the first person to cast a stone on her." And there was nobody. Nobody could do that. And look at the story of Paul, that. He was always persecuting people that followed Christ. He was always killing the believers. And God used him. God used him for his glory. The same thing with David. You know, David was really young. He was unqualified when he was anointed 
to become the king. He can turn up a stone, he can raise a stone to praise him, to worship him. So don't say it that way. Okay, Sister Doria. God is a God of mercy. He's a merciful God. Just one day I will sit you down and tell you the story of my life. How I started serving God. You think you have done so many things? Just, just one day I will tell you about myself. Okay, Sister Gloria. God is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. And don't think about everything that your family had gone through, what happened with your family. Okay, Sister Gloria. Ah! And there's another part of the Bible, Sister Gloria, that talks about repentance. It's in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. Let me just read that. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. The only requirement that God, the only requirement of God is that we should turn to Him. We should turn away from our ways, from our old ways, from all our wicked ways, and turn to Him. He just needs us to open our mouth. I know the Bible says that He knows everything, He knows all our thoughts, He hears our thoughts, but then He still requires us to say it out because God has given us the free will to do whatever we like. And that was why He brought Jesus Christ to us. Because he gave us that free will. And that same free will is taking it into us human. He wants us to just come to him, speak to him. And when we speak to him, he's going to, to, he's going to turn to us as well. He's going to heal us. He's going to heal our land. Heal us when we turn away from our wicked ways. So, Sister Gloria, don't think of all the things you've done. Don't think of, oh, I am not worthy. I have done this. There are examples of people in the Bible that have done bad things, that have done wicked thing that even killed like the story of Paul I told you about he had crucified he had persecuted the men of God and God still forgave him and God still drew him close so sister Gloria don't look at it that way okay, sister Gloria Pastor Moses I, I hear you what can you use anybody what can you use his tool you know it's not like I always wanted to be like this Guess today is the day for the untold story. The untold story. Everything always has its time and moment and day. Seasons, right? Ecclesiastes, right? Everything has its time and season. Yeah, I can see them. Today is the day for the untold story. Pastor Mrs. Are you ready to listen? Then you can judge me if you want. You know, I'm someone that I love God so much. I will go and evangelize, you know, when my mates are playing. I will go out, just wanted to win souls for God. I'll help my, my parents with, you know, money, devotion, night devotion, evangelism. You know, just try, try to help, you know. Until one day, my dad was framed and he went to jail. A lady at his job, he would, he would always come home and tell, he would sit me and my mom down. Ah, God bless Mama Gloria. And he would tell us that, ah, my wife, my daughter, he would pray for me always. Their name is lurking around this, this lady at my job. She has thrown so many advances at me. And I said, no. I said, no. I'm a man of God. I come from a godly home. And I honor my father. And she has tried several, and I said, no. She said, eventually, she will get me. 
That's what my father said. She said eventually she will get to me. Just like that, one fateful day, my dad went to work. I remember him hugging my mom and giving her kisses and they blessed each other and he would kiss me and my little sisters on the forehead or on the cheek. And he would tell us, God bless us and keep us all until we see later in the evening. By his grace, not knowing that was the last day to see my father, out as a free man he went to walk so that day she came to his office and she said look is it that you sleep with me even for even if it's for five minutes or accuse you of rape hmm. God, have mercy. my dad said no I would rather stand for truth And pay the price for truth than to sin against my father. If this is how my journey will end, it is okay. I know that in the end, my father will be proud of me. And she ripped her dress. She moved so close to my dad. She she tore her a top and it was just her bra. And she jumped on my dad and held him so tight and was screaming, he's trying to rape me, he's trying to rape me, he's trying to rape me. And co-workers came. Because they saw the way she held her tight onto my dad and her top was ripped, they believed her. And that was how my dad did it. And I was so angry at God. I said, how? How can you do this? This is a family that serves you. My father didn't deserve that. My father loved God so much. It was one of the reasons why I decided to hold on to God so tight. I, I, I loved his, his, his heart, his perseverance. I loved the way he loved God. And he always led, as Christ is the head of the church, like they said, so a man is the head of his house. So my, that, that is who my father was. And I feared God. He feared God and honored God. He stayed away from evil. Hmm. My father has been in jail now. For seven years. Innocent man. Hmm. I, mm. You know, even at that, I was still going to church as a youth leader. One faithful Saturday, I will never forget that day. I was so happy that I was going to the house of my father to do what I love to do, serve in his vineyard. And all of a sudden, ah, I walked through the door. I see Pastor Evelyn, two church members, an evangelist, Angelina, talking about my family. And Pastor sat there and I heard, ah! <laughs> Nothing is hidden from God. Their sins have catch up with them. They come here like they're the perfect family. They act like they're the only ones that are loved by God. They come and show off that they can sing, they can dance, they can preach, they can do this, they can give often, they can give tithes, they can support the ministry. But yet, the father is a rapist. Although, this was supposed to be between just the leadership. But no, this kind of thing. You have to expose the evil of the church. The wicked people expose their sin so that they can leave. Who knows, maybe the wife self, Mama Gloria, is a prostitute. She's sleeping around. Jesus. Who knows, maybe the husband is the father of those children. Who knows, maybe 
He's not even raping his own children. As for Mama Gloria, we need to cut her off from certain things in the church so that that evil curse of them will not, they will not bring that curse to the church. I was broken. They said, ah, oh, Gloria, she's going to end up useless. She's probably going to end up a dog or even dead on the street. She probably end up a prostitute. She probably end up start selling her body. And her mother will probably end up in the hospital because of mental breakdown, because of shame. But we have to do everything to get them out of this church. And everybody there clapped and said, Yes. We have to stand for the word of God and protect the house of God, like the Pharisees. Turn back and I vowed never. I was so broken. My soul left my body. Ah! I said, God, where are you? I said, How can this be done to us? Where are you? And I never returned back to church ever since then. I don't want anything to do with God. I was so hurt and broken. Oh. I'm so sorry about what happened to you. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Sister Gloria. You know, there's a passage in there's a passage in the Bible. I told you before that everything on this earth is found in the Bible. You know, when you heard all these things, you could have gone to God in prayer. There's a passage in the Bible, uh, Matthew 11, verse 28, I think to 30. Let me just read that to you quickly, Sister Gloria. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and on every loading. Sorry, Sister Gloria. I'll give you rest. Christ alone is the only one that gives us rest. He says the burden on her, in her heart. And it also says, Talk your sister Gloria. Talk your sister Gloria. Okay. And the word of God also says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. Take, take it to God, sister Gloria. When something like that disturbs you, just take it to God in prayer. Because it lightens us. When we take it to God, our bodies are lightened. He allows us to understand things better through the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I remember this song I used to listen to. It says, the church is like an hospital. You know, at the hospital where we have the doctors that takes care of people, we have the nurses that takes care of people. We also have sick people in, in, in the hospital. The sick people that need to be taken care of. When you enter into the hospital, everyone will look alike. Even people that are there to take care of the sick people, they are like the caregivers. So, see the church the same way. There are lots of people in church that also, because they are in this place, they also need the guiding of the Holy Spirit. They also need God to to um to help them know what to say and what not to say so when you hear things like that in the house of god i know the house of god is supposed to be a place of safe having but then we also have people that also like they also have we also have weaknesses even though they feel like they look like they are fervent in the house of god they also have weaknesses take it to god in prayer i know all these things are painful but God is going to lighten up your body. How is going to lighten you? I was so broken. I was broken. Ah. And there's another word in the Bible about the true vine, Sister Gloria. It 
is in June 15, verse 1 to 5. Sister Gloria, let me quickly read that part of the Bible to you. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes them away, it blocks them away. And every branch that bears fruit, it prunes, and that may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Let's read verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and her in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You know what? A part of me has always longed and yearned for God. And I had a dream last night. He visited me. He visited me. I know God sent you here. Because, do you know the scripture? Do you know what he said? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Oh. oh God, God, you are good. Sister Gloria, that was exactly what I heard in the revelation. That was exactly what I heard in the revelation. It's, and before I had, and you know, within having that revelation, I also spoke to your mom. And she told me a lot of things about you. I love God, you know. I know, I really love God. And I miss him. You can come back. The to truth me. is, this life is empty. No. There is no life outside of God. Hmm. No matter the. I have touched money. Hmm. I have been with mighty, famous people. Wherever I go, people people honor and respect me. But I always still felt that void, that emptiness. Something is missing, Sister Gloria, right? There is no life outside God. Yes. And I pretend, then I let pride. I let pride get in. But it's true, like the word of God says, pride comes before downfall. Yes, Sister Gloria. I could have gone to hell. I see that God has, ah. life. Mm. God has a lot to do in your life. Follow him now and start fulfilling those vision. Now start fulfilling those purpose. I, I I can feel it in my spirit that there's a purpose. There's this you God is going to use you for something. You know, Sister Gloria, this same thing you told me, your mom told me the same thing. She also heard the same thing. She heard what people were saying about your family. But one thing she doesn't know is that you also know about it. She didn't know you heard the same thing. But after your mom heard all these things, she held on to God. She still abided in God. Because there's something she told me. And I really respect your mom. And I respect her faith in Christ Jesus. She said that she believes that God is going to restore the glory ah. in your family. She's, he's going to restore it, even in multiple fold. God, he said that to me last night. He said I will restore. Yes, I, I also believe that. I, I, was, I, was, I was amazed mm. when I heard everything she told me and the strong faith she had in Christ. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. So, you can also think that same step. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This is a thank you to God. Thank you to God that you finally want to go back to Christ. You finally want to go back to your dad. And I'm very excited. Please pray for me. Okay, sister, please pray for me. Please pray for me. Lord Jesus, I am thankful now. 
Today is like a well fulfilled day of mine. That Sister Gloria has finally decided to come back to you, God. <laughs> you are first love. I first dad before I actually dad. Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the thanks because I know from now onward, our purposes are restored to fulfillment. She's going to work for your fire. She's going to do great things, Lord. Everything you've spoken to me in the vision, Lord, I thank you, Lord, because they are being activated right now. And those are opening for her. Favors are portion in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful to God that she's back to you. She's back to serving you. She's back to using all her talents for your glory. Lord, I give you all the glory. I don't have any more thing to tell you, but just to thank you. Because today <laughs> is a glorious day. You said it in your word that this kind of this kind of victory is celebrated in heaven. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you for Sister Gloria because she's back to you. She's back to you, Lord. I celebrate you. Thank you, God. Abba, Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Sister Gloria, it's back to you. Congratulations, Sister Gloria. Congratulations, the angels of heaven, God himself and everyone in heaven, the host of heaven are rejoicing for you, they are celebrating for you. There's a party in heaven right now, Sister Gloria. There's a party in heaven right now and we are rejoicing. And there's a party here too, this is Sister Gloria, we are rejoicing. Glory be to God, glory be to God. Congratulations, Sister Gloria. Congratulations to restoration, to life, to purposes. I'm excited, Sister Gloria. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, Sister Gloria. Welcome to the house of God again. Welcome to God. We always remember that you, you are the body of Christ. Okay? The church is just a place we worship, but you are the body of Christ. You are the child of God. Okay, sister, I'm excited right now. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, thank God I got to leave. Say God, no, I'm God to leave. Only one I comfort me. When the people, they bombard me.